Hi folks, welcome to my Irregulars and those of you who are walking through the door for the first time. Did you know a cocktail is a dish best served cold? Does that quote sound familiar? Any thoughts? Well, it was originally, revenge is a dish best served cold. And that's a quote from the fantastic uh, book film, uh, The Godfather. Um, and here we have some uh, amaretto and some whiskey. That's it. It's just two ingredients. So on this episode of Hit the Mahogany, we are going to be making The Godfather. All right, background to The Godfather. It's one of these ones, again, where you have some somebody who claims that they actually invented it, but they also claim they made about half a dozen other cocktails, so uh, unlikely that it was maybe that individual. The other one was that, uh, you know, this became popular in the 70s. I think it was 72 or 73, the film The Godfather was uh, initially released, uh, and the cocktail was becoming popular at that point in time. And maybe Marlon Brando, Happen to uh, fancy tasting a few uh, drinks. Don't know. Did he? Didn't he? I have no idea whatsoever. So not much really in the background for this one. That's it. So let's talk a little bit about Amaretto. Touched upon that before. Amaretto. I just, I personally happen to love anything that's got uh, almonds in it. Marzipan, almond paste. And of course uh, Amaretto. An amaretto is a, I, I've been trying to find out the flavour that you can actually get when you're making a liqueur of this type. You can either have a, one of the two types of regular almonds, which are, one is sweet almonds, those are the ones that you probably normally eat. Uh, bitter almonds, which is of the same genus, but are bitter. And then you have fruit pits, peach, uh, cherry, uh, not so much the cherry, maybe the peach, but more so the apricot. Now, when you open, when you see the pit of an apricot, inside that there's actually a kernel, which is actually sometimes can be referred to as a bitter almond as well. But it's not actually a bitter almond. That's a completely different thing. It looks just like an almond, but smaller. But the uh, the kernel inside the apricot is is small, uh, very small, uh, and it's got that almond flavour to it. But what about that bitterness? Why do the people call them bitter? Well, it's because there's uh, a prussic acid in there, which uh, basically otherwise known as a cyanide. So that's why these nuts and these kernels have that bitterness. And yes, if you had that, it would potentially, uh, would potentially uh, uh, kill you. But when they actually go through the, the making of liqueur, all the... Uh, the, the cyanide is actually just extracted and that's left to the side. It's just not included in any of this. So if you like in drinking this, there's, it's just tastes like almonds. A great way to drink this actually is either neat or, oh good grief, and because it's actually a liqueur, it's actually quite sweet. It only gets up to about 30 proof. And I'm not going to be able to get the lid off this, would you believe? That's crazy. Holy mackerel. This is not going to end well. I should have tried this before. What tends to happen with some of the liqueurs is the sugars dry around the, the top and <laughs> uh, mean that it can be very difficult to actually get it off. Or I put this one on way, way too tight. Uh, I'll be back, okay? I'm going to go and get the lid off my DeSolorono. And now I've loosened the lid off this. Now, as I was saying, oh, it's, it's got such a great smell. You know, and this is actually a bit like uh, limoncello. You can actually make that yourself. I haven't tried it, but certainly something that you could uh, give it a shot. This is great, neat, over a little bit of ice. Another way of really enjoying this. An espresso, splash of a splash of amaretto into your uh, into your coffee. Oh, it's just fantastic, it really is. All right, shall we get to making the drink itself? So generally, uh, we're gonna be using a whiskey, a blended whiskey probably works out pretty well as for, for this. 
You can try anything, can't you? Now what I've got here is I'm actually using the uh, Highland Park full volume. It's an unaged whiskey, so it doesn't have... I shouldn't say unaged. It is aged. Apologies there. Uh, uh, so it's not aged for a long time in the, the, the barrels. So it's a little bit lighter, less of that woody flavour, less of the vanilla, less of the... The, the, the flavours that you would more normally uh, assume with uh, an older whisky. So it's nice, it's light, very amiable to be honest. If you want, get a blended whisky. You can try anything though that you want. Anything. Yeah, it's limitless. Maybe I want, you know, I could probably try the Balvenie Caribbean cask here. Maybe get a little bit of that hint of the rum coming in at the back. Uh, you name it, anything. Uh, and the... Uh, uh, the, the flavours that you're going to get. If you like it, you like it, that's it. So, I'm just going to use this. Now, the original recipe called for uh, a equal quantities of the whiskey and the uh, amaretto. But that makes it very sweet. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make it three and one. So, I'm going to do one and a half ounces of uh, whiskey and then half an ounce of my amaretto, okay? So here's, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna be making two of these, somebody else in the house, shall we give them that as well? So that would be one and a half times two, so that would be three of the whiskey. That was one. Two, three. Whiskey. And that will make this what would be half an ounce for one drink. I'm actually just going to put in one ounce here. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Nothing more. Nothing less. A little my Sorono. Nice and simple. Like brandy and benedictine. A B&B. Rusty nail. These two ingredient ones, they can work very, very well. Now you can actually make this in the glass, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some ice into a glass, I'm going to stir it, get it chilled down quickly as possible, and a little bit of dilution, so give me about 30 to 60 seconds on this, okay? Okay, we have that chilled down, feel the glass cold on the outside. Now, you can pour this over ice, but I would certainly recommend, you want to keep your uh, cocktail served cold, your dish served cold. So, uh, I forgot my tongs, so I'm just using my hands again. Forgive me please, everybody. But, uh, just use a king cube instead. Controls the dilution, means your drink doesn't get watered down, but it keeps it nice and cold, okay? So, in we go. Just nice and simple, look at that, nice light colour to this. Nothing too extreme. There we go. And there are our godfathers. Guess what? I've never tried this. Love this whiskey, love the Di Sirono. Amaretto Sours. Uh, got a video for an amaretto sour as well. If you've ever had one in a bar, it might just been crap ingredients. Check out the video, really good. Amaretto sours are really, really nice. Any sours, as long as you're not making it with shitty sour mix, you know? Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's give the uh, Godfather a wee taste then, okay? Oh! You taste it first, right at the very beginning. You know it's whiskey, you know it's higher proof. You're like, just for a fraction of a second, I can't taste the amaretto, and then just, just right after it, the almond flavor comes flooding in. Particularly with the, the Highland Park, of course, you know, each of your whiskies are gonna have a little nuance. And then after that, at the front, there's a warming over the back of your tongue. It's crazy, actually, the way that, that, that this works. Then there's a warming over the back of your tongue as the rest of that whiskey flavour 
a little bit of the, the tartness coming in at the sides as well. And then just the warmth. You know, it's even although it's been diluted, you know it's still strong, you know. Uh, but sweetened up just a touch by that uh, uh, almond liqueur, amaretto. It does not take away from the whiskey. You know it's a whiskey cocktail. As I said, the almond portion, it's like... It's just a, it's it's right in the middle of the flavour profile, right in the middle as you're actually tasting it there. It's not at the end, it's not at the beginning. Absolutely delicious. Mm. This is a good one. As I keep talking, you know, as I, I've mentioned a few people trying to introduce people to whiskey and, and maybe even whiskey cocktails. And yeah, I know a lot of people will probably go, bloody hell, what's that Philistine up to? Doing that to good Scottish whiskey or good scotch, you know? It's like, if you've got good ingredients, you're going to get a better cocktail. You're not going to wake up with worry. If you still drink a lot, you're going to wake up with a hangover, but you're, you're drinking good stuff. And if you got this in a bar, what type of almond liqueur are they actually going to be using? Are you going to get the drink that's actually maybe just too sweet, and then you end up with that sugar hangover in the morning? Mmm. That's nice. Pleasant, definitely. So any whiskey and almond lovers, you're in for a treat with that one. Okay. All right, everybody, cheers. Enjoy your godfathers. Mm. It's good.